And here we go for the second part of 7.4. Still, again, we're leading up to the binomial theorem. So this is part two. So part one, we talked about Pascal's triangle to find the coefficient of any term. But it becomes more difficult as n becomes really large. For example, if I want to know x plus y raised to the 27th, I would have to go down on my triangle really far to get to 27. More efficient way of finding the coefficient is use factorial notation, which is that n exclamation point. So when we want to say n factorial, it would be n exclamation point. And again, that n is still representing our exponent that we're working with on our binomial expansion. So n factorial, for any positive integer n, n factorial is simply that number n times the next number that's smaller times the next number that's smaller and so on to get to the very end. So for example, 5 factorial, all that would be is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which ends up being 120. And your calculator would do this as well. You should have a factorial and exclamation point on your calculator. So if you type in five exclamation point, it should show you 120. Simpler one, we could do two factorial, which is just two times one, which is still two. Zero factorial. So this one's a little bit different. I mean, how can you go zero times anything is zero, but by definition, zero factorial is one. Because remember, we were talking about this in terms of expansion expanding out our binomials and it deals with the coefficients so this is really x plus y to the zero power which we know is one so this is the trickier one or the one that you have to be careful with zero factorial is actually one all right so let's do some work with the n factorial and our binomial coefficients. So again, let's look at the coefficients of this long one. So x plus y to the fifth is this big long expansion. The coefficient of the third term, so this third term we're looking at right here, is 10 with exponents 3 and 2. So this factorial will help us find that coefficient. Well, we know the coefficient is 10, but let's show that that coefficient is 10. If I were to work this out, if I did 5 factorial divided by 4 factorial times 1 factorial, I, oh, back this up, it's exponents 3 and 2. So 5 factorial, 3 factorial, 2 factorial. If I work all this out, I get 10, which is what I want. That is my coefficient. If I were to look at the second term, well, I know my second term is a coefficient of 5, and exponents are 4 and 1. And so I'm going to use this 5 factorial again, divided by 4 factorial times 1 factorial, and that does, in fact, equal 5. The last term, the coefficient is 1. It's 1 times y to the fifth. Exponents are 0 and 5, because even though it's not written, there is an x to the 0 here that we don't have written. So this is going to be 5 factorial all over 0 factorial times 5 factorial, which ends up being 1. So why was I using 5 factorial where was this 5 factorial coming from every time? That is represented by this exponent. So that's the n value. So in general, the coefficient for the term of the expansion in which the variable part is x to the r, y to the n minus r. So here we've introduced a new variable r to represent one of our exponents, okay? So again, r, n minus r, what I'm doing, these exponents have to sum to be n, and so if one of them is r, 
the other one had to be n minus r. So if this was a variable, if this was 10, well then I'm gonna take whatever my r value is. So say my r value was three, this one is going to be 10 minus three to get seven. So those two exponents would be three and seven. So that's what the r and the n minus r are representing. So to write this out, to find the coefficient on our expansion is going to be n factorial. So again, that's represented with the exponent on our binomial that we're starting with, divided by r factorial, which is the first exponent, times n minus r factorial. And be very careful here, this factorial is on the outside of the parentheses. So we have to take n minus r and then do our factorial. So when I was using my 10 up here, for example, this would have been 10 factorial all over 3 factorial times n minus r, which we found was 7 factorial. This number is the binomial coefficient, and now we can write it with some shorthand notation. You will see it written like this in parentheses with the n over the r. It's not a fraction or you can see it as subscripts. So the subscript of n, c, subscript of r. And how we will read this, how you will hear me say it, how you might see it written, is n choose r. All right, and this gets back to, um, this notation is used a lot in probability. So say you had um, four, tennis balls that you're working with, they're all different colors. If I were to choose zero, there's four ways it could happen. So if I did four choose zero, or I'm sorry, four choose zero, there'd be only one way it could happen. Four choose one, if I chose one at a time, there's four ways that I could choose one at a time, and so on. So this gets into probability a little bit. So our formula, so n choose r, is going to be this factorial formula, n factorial all over r factorial, n minus r factorial. So let's actually do these. If I said six choose two, so I had six tennis balls and I wanted to choose two at a time, how many ways could I do that? Well, six choose two is going to be six factorial all over two factorial, 6 minus 2 factorial. So this is 6 factorial all over 2 factorial, 4 factorial. What this ends up being is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. This ends up being 2 times 1 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So we can see right here, if I have 4, 3, 2, 1 on top, 4, 3, 2, 1 on bottom, those are going to go to a useful form of 1, so I don't really have to worry about that. So 6 times 5 is 30, divided by 2 is 15. So there's 15 different ways, if I had 6 tennis balls, that I could choose 2 at a time. If I want to do 8 choose 0, well this would be 8 factorial, all over 0 factorial, 8 minus 0 factorial. So this is 8 factorial. 0 factorial we know is 1, all over 8 factorial. So this has to be 1. If I were to do 10 choose 10, well, we can start to think of this. I had 10 tennis balls, and I want to choose 10 at a time. There's only one way I could do it. But let's show using our factorial. So I'd have 10 factorial all over 10 factorial times 1, and so that ends up just being 1. If I wanted to see it in this notation, 12 choose 10, that's the same thing as saying 12, 10 in this format. So this is 12 factorial all over 10 factorial, 12 minus 10, find that, then do the factorial. So this is 12 factorial, 10 factorial times 2 factorial, work all this out, 
that would be 66 ways that I could make that happen. All right, so that's part two. So take a look at a few problems on part two due by Sunday.